on guys welcome back to another video and today Joe and I are gonna be throwing in these brand new Amazon seats <laughs> Now this is gonna be, this has been really exciting. I say that in every single one of my videos, as you guys probably hear, if you guys watch all my videos or just even some of my videos, you'll know that I say, "Oh, this is exciting." I've been waiting such a long time. It is true. I talk to Joe about this all the time. How I'm like, dude, I want to get this. I want to get that. I wait a long time for it, and it's also a lot of money all at the same time as well. Now, where we got these seats are actually on Amazon, and believe it or not, these things are actually pretty gorgeous. I was actually expecting these to be a lot worse because I was reading a lot of reviews online, and I was like, man, well, they do have four and a half, five stars. They do have a lot of people who bought them. A lot of people. C5 Corvettes ended up getting them. Hardly, hardly, yeah, a lot of, hardly anybody that had a Mustang had them, but there was one person on there that did have them, and I think he had a 2011 Mustang, and he said he used Corbeau brackets, and he had to do a little bit of fabricating, so I'm expecting today, as I looked over just the other day when I was over in my garage, that yes, these brackets I ended up getting from Corbeau, a passenger side and a driver side, are going to need to be fabricated a little bit, and as from what I could see, and we're going to be going into this a little bit more, is that these brackets are more than likely going to have to shift over just a little bit on each side, just so these seats can work because on the other underside of these seats the brackets are actually closer together than it is on the bracket this is probably i wouldn't think it's going to take too long compared to the other stuff that we do what, what would you think no, don't be surprised but how much were the brackets <laughs> the brackets were about i believe from the top of my head they were about 262 dollars and these seats believe it or not if you take a wild guess they look like they'd be like 700 dollars seats just from the quality of them these things feel amazing they look great they look like any other racing seat and on the back side of it they even have carbon fiber um, vinyl to it and this thing actually looks pretty gorgeous the only downside that i realized about this and i don't know if it was me or if it came like this but there's actually a little piece that snapped right here like a little piece of plastic that is for the lever to move the seat and recline it back and forth and by the way it does recline back that's one great thing about this i ended up buying it for but other than that these seats feel gorgeous and someone is calling me right now and i'm not going to answer the phone <laughs> See? Okay, but yeah, not sorry. You're not getting my phone call right now. Is this the Krusty Krab? No, this is Patrick. These seats were about $400. Oh, don't And also another thing too, I don't, good thing Joe pointed this out. One thing that you were definitely going to need. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. When you are putting these seats in, well, you don't necessarily need it, but it's a headache to get out of the way in the future. But this is an airbag resistor. And a lot of you guys online I've seen, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people I've seen have actually cut the airbag thing on here, this little plastic piece. And they actually cut it out, put a two ohm resistor in there, soldered it in and called it a day. And so I ended up doing a lot of homework, a lot of research online. I found a website under the name of KOHR Motorsports. I'll put the link down in the description down below. And what this is, is it actually acts as a replacement. So it tricks the airbag and to think that you have one in these seats. Cause on the 2011 to 2014 Mustangs, there's actually airbags within the sides of the seats. This one has nothing at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this in and make sure that we don't have that airbag light. Cause I know it's gonna annoy the fuck out of me <laughs> if, I, if I see that airbag light all the time. So. We're getting this, hopefully it works. So I recommend anybody who's looking to get an airbag light to turn off, this is the route to go without having to do cutting, get worried about soldering, screwing something up. Other than that, hopefully this does work. It should, it cost me $45, it better work. <laughs> but other than that, what we're gonna need for this job is some jack stands. I'm kidding, no, we're not gonna need some jack stands. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just messing around. mistake that I made that I thought I was doing the absolute right thing in the entire time I was drilling holes for absolutely zero reason. I want to make sure you guys don't run into the same mistake. Joe, explain to them exactly the dumb shit I just did. <laughs> so I noticed something wrong right as Logan started drilling. What he was doing is putting this part of the rail, this skinny part, onto the seat itself, right? And uh, I can't really see the hole you drilled. Oh, right it means I did a good job. Um, <laughs> you basically put it, you know, on, on the seat itself. But I was thinking like looking at the bracket because we were trying to mock this up these holes right here line up already with this bracket Which means they belong to the bracket not the seat this big fat part these bigger holes should go to the seat So what Logan did was just install them upside down this skinny area of the of the rail Goes to the bracket this fat part goes to the seat and watch me still screw it up. It has these uh, these long holes Which I can already see now They might just line up already we don't need to drill in the don't first tell place. me that please <laughs> but we will have to drill into the bracket regardless because of the width this is uh more wider than what was provided so these are the corbeau rails not the actual seat rails 
Those are the original ones. These are the Corbeau ones. Yeah, you drilled into a $200 bracket rail for no reason. Well, no one will see it. Just hopefully <laughs> I don't have to return it. <laughs> this is the adjustment bar for this seat, not the Corbeau one. The Corbeau one would be too tiny because it's too, the width is not as much. But the only issue with that is that the little guide, it's too skinny for this bar to slide in. So what I have to do is pinch this area right here. I already marked it with a Sharpie. And then it will go in this channel right here. And then there's already a hole. So, you know, that's how, that's how we'll get that leverage going on. Just to think about it, like people on YouTube right now are thinking we probably have already completed this and it looks awesome. And right now we have no clue this is gonna work at the moment. Cause sometimes I'll be watching videos and I'm like, oh yeah, they got this, this is definitely gonna work. And then like just a reality in this hour time right now, we're just like, I hope this works. <laughs> no, this is gonna work. <laughs> I thought it was the idea to put a, uh, a channel lock inside a vise and basically where these marks are for the Sharpie, we'll put it in there. Well, that's working. And we will turn the vise and the channel lock is going to clamp down here. So we'll see the results. All right, so we just bent the other one to the same method. So slide it in there. And this one can put a little pressure. A little too much pressure. And there you go. Should we test it out? We'll make it work. Other than that though, with the exception of me doing that Frankenstein shit of drilling this stuff in, then this would have been a lot quicker. I just blew a lot of time drilled stuff in, not really paying attention. So with how this seat's set up, they're a little bit wider. So what we're gonna need to do is drill new holes on each side. This should be the final part before this seat bracket's complete. Crossing our fingers, this should work, but we're pretty confident that this will work. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, I agree. I mean, well, I would have no choice but to make it work. I mean, so what we did so far is we mocked this bracket up as straight as we could through the rail. And I looked up from the inside of here and I just drew a line where the hole was. And basically the length of this is the same regardless to these two bolt holes. So once I drew this line, I know where our drill hole is going to be because I can match it parallel to the old bolt hole. We're just making it wider, if that makes sense. So pretty much we're using the last hole that was originally on here as a reference to the new hole that we're gonna be making, which kind of helped out a little bit because we knew exactly the distance and the width of what the new hole is gonna be. Because if we, it was drilled, if it wasn't drilled at all, we would have had to figure it out for ourselves, but this kind of helps us out to know that how far we're gonna go this way and how far we're possibly gonna need to go that way. The key here is to be parallel. If you happen to buy the seat, and seat rail combination and, and it's fucked up don't blame me <laughs> but what i end up finding out too is that the brahm seat brackets that are kind of these are kind of like the brahm seats they're a lot wider and it'd probably been a lot easier to be able to use those instead of these because these just have rails while the other ones are actually flat and wider so it'd probably be easier to go with the brahm ones but if you're looking to spend a, l a little bit less money and get the corbo ones definitely go this way but if you're looking to not really care about how much you're spending on seat brackets then go ahead and go use the brahm ones and it'll probably be a lot easier to do just in my opinion after looking at some of the pictures yeah so basically what i did was we looked at we made sure it's even side to side and once we did that you know i looked inside here to this hole and that's where i drew my line it's really, really important that I want to mention too that I don't think I brought up. So make sure you have the right bracket when doing this because this is the seatbelt right here. This is the seatbelt bracket in order to be able to plug in your seatbelt whenever you need to. So you're just going to have to detach up from the stock one all the way over here. But the thing is too, is you want to make sure that it's not on the same side as recline because if you have them the same size recline, you have them oppositely on. So you have to make sure that when you do have this on, this bracket is on the opposite side of where the reclining is at. With this one and this one. And if it matches... Then everything else should line across. up. Across... It would, yeah, it should match up so we can confidently do it. All right, let's do it. So Joe and I just did a little bit of a mock-up on this just to make sure that everything was good to go. And luckily and happily, everything worked out. In our we just put the bolts in just to see if it'll line up, and which it does. So next is to drill these two corners and then finally bolts it up and then start putting the car. It is important to have these two rails the same. You know what I mean? The same adjusted, I guess. 
because if we ended up screwing this up a little bit because we had one just a little bit slightly up one all the way down and we were like why is this not lining up we both got scared for a second like we just screwed up but we end up finding out that the reason why this didn't line up is because we had to make sure that all this is down all at the same time for this in order to work or else your measurements will be completely off so it is crucial to make sure you do the proper measurements for this to work or else the whole thing is going to be screwed up for yourself. So we're taking out the passenger seat right now. It's only gonna require two bolts on this side and there's also another two on this side as well. There's gonna be another bolt here and there's gonna be another bolt on that side. And the moment we take it out, we're gonna be able to take this whole seat out. Be extra careful when we take this out because there's a wire that's connected to the airbag. We don't wanna yank on that. So when we do get this loose, we're gonna lift it up lightly, unplug it. Hopefully there's no any issues with that. And from there, we'll be able to take everything off. That was not hard at all, which kind of worries me a little bit. Now mine, don't come with this on the driver's side for whatever reason but we have some plastic coverage here that we have to take off in order to get to those screws i feel like i'm gonna cut myself again you just have to pull back on them <laughs> okay let me explain uh, something here i don't smoke at all and i've told you guys in the past that I, this is crazy every time i get into this car i always find something new about this and someone who had this before it looked like they didn't really give a shit who had the car prior to this or just, just in general and we've had cigarette burns in the back seat probably because you can see back here there's a little spot right here and i believe there's another spot somewhere else in the seat i think it's on the i don't even give a shit where it's at long story short i found cigarette packs in the back of the trunk i found receipts of cigarette packs i've actually found a match within the side of the center console in here with a barbecued french fries sitting on the inside that joe and i when we first took this car apart we found but this is interesting i just come across yeah, more and more things and there's also somebody's hair here <laughs> that's gross as well but this is unique because i thought i grabbed everything out of this car and i didn't so that goes to show i've never taken off these seats before and i'm not lying to you guys just think so oh not these were one of the the super long ones just i think that someone's Ew. mouth is someone's on, mouth is on it. yeah i gotta wash my hands <laughs> is it tighter you probably will. What's it? Oh, I broke the tab. Starters. What is this? A piece of popcorn chicken? Oh, a penny. No, there's a penny. At least I made some money out of this. I don't even want to know if I want to touch this. What is that? A popcorn piece? Oh, it's a crouton. A crouton. <laughs> oh, in here right now. Man, I got blood. Man, I'm bleeding. All right. There oh. is an airbag connector. These things are a lot heavier than the other ones. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so you're saving weight too. Yeah. Weight reduction. Jesus Christ. Look at the room in here. I could just look. <laughs> spider, spider, spider. I wasn't gonna record the driver's side just because of the fact that we were just gonna go take this in and put it right back in. All right, we're take this out and put it back in with the new seat considering you guys just washed the whole passenger side. But I just wanted to show you because I ended up buying one resistor by mistake thinking I only needed one, but I'm gonna need two. 2011 to 2014 Mustang. And what it does, it plugs into this yellow clip right here that's under your seat. And it should just go straight in. Hopefully it fits and we pissed if it doesn't and it does. So this is gonna be the resistor to trick the airbag into thinking that there is an airbag in your racing seat when there really isn't. So that's what you're gonna need for this side. And also, on the other side as well and unfortunately i don't have a vacuum right now so i'm gonna unfortunately have to just leave all this gross shit here this is disgusting we're gonna have the airbag light on a little bit just for the fact that i don't have the other resistor on here that plugs right into this so the airbag light's gonna be on for a while i just ordered one so by the time this video is posted i'll probably already have it in there so, logan just uh cut open brand new seat awesome. the bottom of it and it has these bars so this is passenger presence seat module. But when somebody sits on here, this is the top, somebody sits on here, the little tiny vacuum pressure it puts, it, this is a hose. And basically the hose, if it sees, there's a diaphragm inside the sensor. So if it sees somebody is sitting in here, it'll send that signal through the wire, through the harness, to the airbag system. That's to know somebody's in the seat, somebody's sitting in it. We believe this sensor as well, this was mounted like to the side. We believe this is for how far the seat was back and forth. 
I mean, personally, I don't, I don't see the point of this, like, uh, in our situation, but we'll still keep it plugged in. What we're gonna try to do is put the bladder in between these bars here, and then hopefully route it up cleanly. Less wire mess is the best. Kind of get this seam of quality going on. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna try this, and uh, we'll keep you up to date. We got past. We got this in. Looks good. Only hard part I really noticed is that this uh, this this module is like layered. Getting this hose past each one of these bars is pretty tricky. It's probably a two-person job. If anything, I, that's what I would suggest. But now we just gotta wrap everything all nice and neat. We should be ready to go. You actually you want to push down and have someone else pull down as you go. So you're pushing somebody, pushing against this, and the next person is going to pull down on it to make it as easy as possible. Because honestly, if you don't cut this out, this purpose of this whole piece is pointless. And I've seen some people say they wrap it up into like a burrito, but I feel like that's dangerous all at the same time too, because it's telling somebody that's in there that the airbag is always on, even if someone's not sitting there. But other than that, if you want to go this route, you can cut this open and make sure that when you do lay it down, it's a lot easier to wear. You could just use all, retain all your factory stuff. belt connector and you know the magnet you isolate it at the main connector so you can plug it in your car i only cut off two wires these are the power and ground wires to your your seat motor all the functions for that i managed to you know get this harness out you just yanked oh, well those, these yanked. are only two the over. <laughs> these these are the only two things we needed just yank these wires out the harness we had to be careful a little bit you know a little bit and just cut these two because these are not needed these are just for the motor we'll have to neatly tape this up and route it under the new seat these three wires you know they go just go straight through there's three pins in there they're not connected to each other they, these are power and ground for a different circuit so these three wires are just signal wires to this sensor and this sensor which is the seat belt i don't know what this magnet does specifically but I know it involves how the airbag works and whatnot. So this whole process right here, Joe, overall, even though we still haven't put the driver's seat in, how long did it take us? I'm assuming it went from like 10 o'clock when we started and it's I think almost five, but the only reason why it took us so long to do is the main reason because we had to figure out the whole bracket situation, figure out exactly what needed to come off. Cause this was kind of fresh to us. We couldn't really go off YouTube to figure out exactly what we needed to do. And this then the videos we did find were not useful at all. So we're trying to be useful to you guys, hopefully in more detail than we can. This might be a very boring video all at the same time, but we're trying to give you guys value and gain you guys some a little bit more expertise on this, just for the fact that we had to suffer through the guinea pig portion of it, just so you guys could be able to accomplish what you needed to do in order to get done in a quicker amount of time. Because again, this probably took us a, a multiple variety of hours to be able to figure this out. And once we got to that driver's side, we figured out how to do the passenger side. Everything literally just was, you know, the snowball was rolling from there and it was a lot easier to do. person to sit in here how does it feel does it feel comfortable does me and logan want to make love <laughs> i can scoot them back i think it, i think they're really clean bro i think they go they go your entire you know? i definitely like the look of it they look really really nice and look very sporty especially with the interior of how this is all set up but with all that carbon sporty. fiber it's enough to where it looks like it's an average sports car in a way if that makes sense i feel like it's that one key piece missing inside this interior oh yeah okay john has to share up he has to scoot all the way up until his knees touch the dash. Dude, it feels like I'm sitting in right. Does it feel good? Yeah. Like it hugs my leg. I like how I'm asking you this question. This is my car and I don't even know what it feels like yet. But I'm yeah, no, I, I like how it doesn't hug too like, much. My shoulders can't, like, you're, you're there. Does it feel good? Yeah, dude. I'm curious how it's going to feel with all the suspension components now. That's what I'm excited for. Oh, that's side to side, was it? I want to see if this really made a difference with it. Well, here, let me see. They're trying to get in here, but these seats feel good. They hug you right here. Yeah, that's what I said. All right, let's well, stop lying to everybody. Let's actually <laughs> no, but for real, this actually feels really good compared to the last one because the last one feel like there's a lot of like slack on the sides where you're like moving side to side. These ones feel like it's not hugging you crazy to the point where you're like, fuck, these are like too much for me. But this is enough to where you feel like you got a little bit of room and it feels nice. But like what Jacob said, I feel like this is going to be like an issue when it comes to like I long road trips and stuff. Like this is probably a no-go for me. Yeah, where, where are you going to strap the head pillow to this? <laughs> 
but one thing I noticed for sure is that compared to your old seat, this space right here is and it, way bigger. Yeah, and I mean, it helps everyone out who's getting in and out of this car if you really think about it, though. Like I mean, if you had passengers to begin with. And to show you guys the seat rails, there's no problems with it. And the only thing I could really tell you guys, I feel that could have been a little bit better with these seats, but it's really not a really big complaint, is the fact that the seat belt is like, that has this huge gap right here, and you see this bar right here, but it's really no big deal. And I realize, too, if you go too far forward, your seat belt's gonna be all the way back, so you don't really see it. So you're gonna have to just pull it back and forth. But again, it's really not that big of a deal. I'm really loving these seats. They feel really good. I'm excited to see how it feels. Joe and I are about to go on a test drive right here in a little bit to see how this feels. And other than that, I mean, for that $400, I think it was worth it. For everything, that's rail seat. Oh, well, I spent another $45 today. So let's say about $700 for everything because I ended up buy, having to buy another resistor again for that other side. So I spent almost $100 just on resistors alone. And yes, you could have gone the option of buying a used one or a new one and cutting in, putting the two ohm resistor, but I didn't really want to have to go through all that. They already made something for this car. Your airbag off message is on because I'm not sitting. But as I sit down, <laughs> it doesn't turn off. No, there it, it goes. Turns, it off. turns off. There you go. It takes time, but it does work. It does work. So that the way we routed that underneath the seat is correct. Frankenstein shit that we did we were able to make this work and it feels just fine like you can see that the seats aren't moving everything slid nice and easy I do got a vacuum under the seats at some point which none of you guys probably give a shit about but for those of you that are cleansy freaks and you'll probably know but I feel like this really cleans up the interior of this car to match with the touchscreen the carbon this automatic shifter <laughs> I'm just kidding, but no, but overall though, like I really feel like it makes the car look a lot more sportier on the interior with the except for those fat fucking seats out right here. Because these fat seats, they just did not look sporty at all. Then these very light, very comfortable. By the way, I don't think I brought it up before, but the seats that we took out, they were heavy. Especially the driver's side with the motor in it. <laughs> and then these ones, I could literally just lift up over my head and like do weights on it. It was not hard whatsoever. And definitely you're getting some weight reduction out of this and also at the same time you're getting some stability, just in my opinion, with your body. And I also feel like too, it's not just the suspension under the car that helps, but it's also the driver too, because the driver's not in control, your suspension's kind of pointless all at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So a few days have gone by and I just finally put in the airbag resistor for the passenger side of the car and I'm happy to say that the airbag light just turned off. And I was a little bit worried about it because I wasn't, I didn't know 100% sure if it was going to turn off or not and I was taking a gamble at it because it was $45 and who knows if they're just scamming you or not and I'm happy to say that this company really outdid themselves to be able to turn off my airbag light. But overall, I have both resistors on both sides, the passenger side and the driver's side and the lights are off. I'm going to show you guys right now that I am not lying to you guys. I'm so happy the lights are off and they are super annoying. So so overall, this was a great, great experience. And other than that though, I highly recommend anybody who's looking to get some airbag resistors without having to worry about cutting and soldering and doing all these other random things and going through different ways to make sure this light turns off. Just go the simple way, spend the $45 and go ahead and get the airbag resistors for both sides. It will really save you the headache and knowing like a peace of mind that the light's not gonna turn back on. I'm gonna start it right now. 
the light turns off. This experience with this project has been definitely worth it in my opinion. I definitely recommend anybody who's looking to get an affordable seat as well as be able to save some money when it comes to getting brackets and also as well making sure you have a peace of mind whenever the airbag light does turn off that you're not having to worry about seeing all these different little things where you're like, oh, my airbag's not working. I gotta see this light all the time. Are these seats gonna last? For the couple days I've had them in, they makes the car smell brand new again. And honest to God, they feel very, very nice and they look awesome. I end up flipping the seatbelt and also the seatbelt cover within the seat and it makes it look a little bit more sportier and it feels really, really nice as well. And I also didn't wanna make sure I ripped up over here over a period of time with it rubbing and stuff. But other than that though, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something out of it. And if you guys have any questions, let me know because we had to go through this whole video without having to watch any video videos whatsoever because no one really ended up doing this and if it was just like for c5 corvettes or something like that but other than that though please subscribe like down below comment any questions you guys might have and i will see you guys in the next one